Reading manga and watching anime was a pretty big part of my childhood. Like many kids in the West back in the late 90s and early 2000s, I was introduced to anime by shows like Pokemon, Naruto, Inuasha, and Dragon Ball Z. And of course, all of the amazing Studio Ghibli films. Naturally, this got me interested in manga, so I started with Dragon Ball and read One Piece, Death Note, Dot Hack, and many others, all from my school library. Which was great, because being a dumb kid with no Ooh. money, I couldn't afford afford to buy the volumes myself. And let's be honest, I was probably spending my allowance on LEGO. So it may seem odd that I've never really talked about manga on my channel. Well, at some point in high school, I just stopped reading it. Probably because I was trying to be cool or something, I don't know. Anyway, after going into college directly after and being drained of all life, money, time, and energy, I just never really had the time to get back into manga. Over the years, I did manage to collect a small shelf of ones that I mostly found on sale. But now I figure, since I have a book-related channel, I might as well make Make some manga videos every once in a while as well. At least that's my excuse to buy more manga. Recently, Indigo, the biggest bookstore chain in Canada, had a deal where you can buy two manga or graphic novels and get the third free, as well as get 500 points per book, meaning an additional discount on top of that. So I decided to go to Chapters and pick up some volumes, and I got quite a few of them. Now I know in a previous video I mentioned that I don't plan on doing any more book hauls, and I'm, I'm kind of going to break that rule for this one. But I also went ahead and read the first volume of all of this manga, so I can, I can share with you my initial thoughts. Now besides the sale, I also picked up two box sets, so let's start by looking at Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. This beautiful deluxe box set features two hardcover volumes containing the complete manga, which was previously released in seven paperback volumes. Each hardcover includes some high-quality full-color spreads, as well as a detailed color color map. And as a nice bonus, this box set comes with a double-sided poster. The story and artwork is amazingly detailed, which is a given considering they're both done by Hayao Miyazaki, the man who co-founded Studio Ghibli and is one of the greatest geniuses of animation this world has ever seen. The movie for Nausicaa has always been one of my favorites, and I highly recommend watching it if you haven't. The story of Nausicaa takes place in a future where long ago the world was devastated by biological warfare, almost leaving life extinct. The Earth is now slowly submerging beneath the expanding Sea of Corruption, a toxic forest that creates mutant insects and releases poisonous spores. On the outskirts of this toxic forest are a handful of scattered kingdoms, one of which is the Valley of the wind, to where Nausicaa is princess. Nausicaa has an ability to communicate with animals, including the Ohm insects of the forest. And with the Sea of Corruption ever expanding and what remains of humanity still waging war against each other for resources, Nausicaa fights to bring peace. I didn't even know there was a manga for a really long time, and after reading this first omnibus, all I can tell you is that you definitely need to give it a read, especially if you're a fan of Nausicaa. There is so much story in this. I almost feel like the movies could have been stretched out into a trilogy because there is so much that was not in the movie. I think I can already say I recommend this box set. It is such high quality, it is beautiful, and it's a really fair price. Next, I picked up the Bakuman Complete Box Set. I found this on eBay for $90, so about $4.50 per volume, which is the cheapest I've seen it. I as usually it's around $160 Canadian on Amazon. I read the first volume years ago and loved it, but ended up giving it to a friend because I planned on buying the box set, but just never did. So after finally getting my hands on this box set, I ended up rereading volume one, as well as volumes two, three, and I'm currently reading volume four, because this series is very addictive. And I am most definitely gonna binge my way through the entire series. If you don't know, this series is created by the same duo who made Death Note. Bakuman follows two students, one good at drawing and the other at writing, and they team up together to create manga. It's a simple yet very clever concept, I've never read a manga like this before, and it's a very entertaining slice of life manga that's a mix of comedy and romance. There's also an anime, but I've only watched a few episodes because I want to finish reading the manga first. Honestly, I think I would say this is a must read for any manga reader because you learn so much about the industry and just how much effort and work goes into creating manga. Next is Volume 1 of Vinland Saga. Why have I not read this before, and why did I not buy more volumes? To give you a very brief description, this story follows a boy named Thorfinn, who, as a child, listened to the stories of the great Leif Erikson, who told of a far-off land to the west known as Vinland. 
Thorfinn's childhood is soon crushed after a mercenary raid where he ends up being raised and trained to be a warrior by the same Vikings that killed his family, holding onto the gold to eventually challenge the band's leader to avenge their death. Now this volume throws you into the middle of a battle and works its way backwards, giving you backstory to Thorfinn after we've seen what he's capable of. I really enjoyed this first volume and I can tell I'm gonna like this series. Also, apparently it's getting an anime adaptation later this year. Next, I got volumes 1 to 9 of My Hero Academia. Actually, after filming this, I ended up going back to chapters and picking up volumes 10 and 11 as well. Now I'm sure you've heard of My Hero Academia. This is a series that everyone and their quirkless grandma is talking about. Obviously, it's about a superhero academy, but the story has a twist. Instead of superheroes being rare with only a select few having powers, in this world, 80% of the population has superpowers, which are known as quirks. And there are so many just crazy and creative powers displayed in this series, and I love it. I mean, come on, who doesn't want to shoot tape out of their elbows? or have extendable earphone jacks instead of regular earlobes. In volume one, we're introduced to our protagonist, Izuku Midoriya, one of the 20% who was born quirkless, yet he still wants to join the Hero Academy. I feel like the story does start off a bit basic and predictable, but as you read on, it gets really good. Now, just like Bakuman, I ended up reading volumes one, two, and three, and I'm currently reading volume four. If you have watched the anime, it does follow the manga quite well, so there is isn't a whole lot different here. There is some small little extra details that you get from reading the manga. It's just a lot of fun. If you don't like quirky, uh, pun intended, uh, shonen fighting manga, then you, then you might not like this. Um, but if you do, if you like shonen manga, then I would highly recommend checking it out. Shout out to my cousin Marshall who introduced me to My Hero Academia and binge watched the entire series with me because that's one of the reasons I got back into reading manga was because of this series. And also, I had an unused EB Games gift card so I decided to use it on this awesome figure of Midoriya. It goes pretty good on my shelf. This is the Amazing Heroes Volume 1 figure by Ben Presto. If you're interested, I'll leave a link to the exact one in the description. I also picked up volumes 1 through 4 of Full Metal Alchemist, the Full Metal Editions, and these hardcover editions are awesome. I'm sure if you're watching this video, you probably know of Full Metal Alchemist, so to save time, I'll skip talking about the story for now. The original show has always been a favorite of mine, and Brotherhood is arguably even better, so I definitely recommend either of the anime. However, I've only ever read a couple volumes of the manga, so I do want to read it in its entirety. I will say that volume 1 was never really one of my favorites, but I know this series gets better later on. There's three options to buying Full Metal Alchemist. You can get the three-in-one editions, the singles or the box set, or you can get these editions. These editions are the way to go, especially if you're a collector or a big fan of the series. However, I did not realize that it's going to take a long time for all of these editions to come out, so I, I kind of wish that I went with the box set because I want to finish the story, but I'm going to have a, a long wait ahead of me waiting for the full metal editions, but at least they're really beautiful, so it's kind of worth it. Next we have the perfect editions for 20th Century Boys volumes 1 to 3, which are a bind up of 3 volumes in 1. Here we follow Kenji Endo, a normal convenience store manager who's just trying to get by. The story goes back Back and forth showing us his childhood, where he and his friends made a secret hideout with a symbol to identify their group. A place to relax, read manga, listen to music, and escape from the town bullies. Now as adults, they all live pretty mundane lives, but after one of Kenji's childhood friends suddenly commits suicide, leaving behind clues to a bigger conspiracy, and multiple murders involving a mysterious virus start appearing around the city, leaving the same symbol the boys used for their secret hideout, it becomes it becomes evident there's a mysterious organization targeting him and his childhood friends. This surprised me. I didn't know anything about 20th Century Boys. I've heard of it before, but I haven't heard anything about it. I think I'd actually say out of all the manga that I picked up, this one was actually my favorite. Urasawa does such a good job at weaving different plot lines and just seamlessly going from Kenji's childhood to the present day, as well as just adding in mystery and suspense the entire time. If it sounds even remotely like something you'd be interested in, from what I've read so far in this first perfect edition, I don't know how the story is later on, but from what I've read so far, I would give it the highest possible recommendation. I enjoyed it that much. I'm probably gonna read this second volume 
as soon as I wrap up the video. Next up is Vagabond, the Vizbig Editions Volumes 1 and 2. These, I definitely want to get all 12 of them eventually because the spine art is so cool. And when you got the complete set, it looks beautiful. Vagabond is a historical fiction manga about the 17th century man known as Shinmen Takazo, who would then go on to become the legendary swordsman Miyamoto Musashi. I don't know much about the real Musashi other than that he's known as one of the most skilled swordsmen in history, but you don't really need to know the real history going into this. Though I'm definitely intrigued to look into it now. This first omnibus volume is really just the start of Takazo's character progression. At the beginning, he is this primal force acting on animal instinct to stay alive, and we see him grow later on. There is a lot of action scenes and some really awesome battles in this first volume, but so far it hasn't opened up to a wider story quite yet. So I will for sure be continuing this series because I do hear it gets really good. Orange, volumes 1 and 2, the complete collection by Ichigo Takano. I've seen this manga around for a long time. Um, Jesse the Reader has talked about it quite a bit. It's only two volumes, so I'm glad I picked it up because it's fairly short, and I'm glad I gave it a try because I actually really enjoyed this first volume. It's nothing that really blew me away, but I still really enjoyed it. I love the friendships that are going on between the characters. Um, it definitely pulls at your heartstrings, and there is some surprising moments that I, I was not expecting. This series follows a second year high school student who receives letters sent from herself 10 years into the future. Her future future self asking her to prevent some of her biggest regrets, which somehow have something to do with the new transfer student from Tokyo. At first she's in disbelief until the accuracy of the letters becomes too much to ignore. But yeah, I think the friendships in this manga is probably my favorite part. I love seeing some good friendships. It's a good teen manga that I think would be perfect for somebody just getting into manga. I also found volume 1 of Yu Yu Hakusho, I found this for $4 at Value Village, so I decided to pick it up and I gave it a read. This is a classic Shonen Jump manga. I actually read it the day that I bought it, and it was it was fun. It's probably not something I'm really gonna collect in the future. I do have memories of watching the anime a long time ago. I don't really remember it that much. I also had the Game Boy Advance game for Yu Yu Hakusho. Actually, it might have been my brother's game, but I remember playing it. But it was never really a series that I got into. Let me know if you've read it or watched the anime. Anyway, those are the manga that I recently picked up. I probably won't be buying anything more for a while now, but let me know what your recommendations down below. And definitely be expecting some manga reviews from me in the future. Now I thought it'd be fun to end this video by telling you some of the series that are up on my wish list, some of the ones that I plan to save up to get next, so that I can make videos on them. And starting with number one, I think one of the series that I really want to get is the original Dragon Ball box set, which is being reprinted this June. I'm happy it's being reprinted. I'm not sure if I'm going to pick it up this June or not. I might wait a little bit longer, um, but I definitely want to make a review on the original Dragon Ball. Obviously, since Dragon Ball was the first manga that I read, it holds such a special place in my heart and it's still one of my favorite series. Also going with box sets, A Silent Voice. I've heard that that series is really good. It's another slice of life manga. I don't really know a whole lot about it, but that is up there on one that I would like to make a video on, possibly in the future. The 35th anniversary box set for Akira. It's pretty expensive, but that box set is beautiful. I'm a big fan of the Akira movie, as you can probably tell by my shirt, but I have heard that the manga is so much better, and I've never read it before, so eventually I would like to pick up the box set. One series that I actually meant to get during this sale, but they didn't have it at the store, is Gundam Origin. When I was a kid, I used to watch Mobile Fighter Gundam, as well as Gundam Wing, and a little bit of Gundam seed. Gundam Wing was always my favorite though. And the Gundam Origin manga looks amazing. It is such high quality. Uh, I love hardcover manga. The Battle Angel Alita box set. If I ever do get this one, you better be sure that I'll be making an entire video dedicated to Battle Angel Alita. And if I do that, then I might actually do my first movie review by reviewing a Alita Battle Angel because that is one of the best manga to movie adaptations ever. I would highly recommend watching it. Those are the ones I can think of right now anyway. But like I said, let me know your recommendations in the comments. Also, let me know if you want to see me make more manga-related videos, and I will see you guys next time.